there and welcome back to Spilling the Paint Water. My name is Chloe Rose, but I go by Chloe Rose Art on YouTube or at Art of Chloe Rose on Instagram and Twitter. So if you want to check out more artsy content, feel free to check out my channel or follow me on other social media. Today I am talking to the lovely sweetheart that is Bailey J. She is a highly successful artist on YouTube with over 1.1 million subscribers. She's such a lovely, bubbly artist with an incredible business sense and a knack for art vlogs. You can find her on YouTube as Bailey J or on Twitter and Instagram as Bailey underscore J. I'm super excited for this episode, so I really hope that you enjoy. Okay, so I am here today with the lovely Bailey J. Bailey, how are you doing? I'm so good. How are you? I'm doing good. I love your art space. All the Disney stuff is just like, ah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I know. It's not even that much art stuff. It's just all my yeah. collections, all my belongings, my dolls, my books. You have like <laughs> the dream collection. Like I have these like, oh, this bloody picture frame keeps going wonky. But I have a few little Disney stuff and then there's you and you're just like full blown Disney collector. <laughs> <laughs> it almost makes you look a little crazy, especially if this is the first thing people see. If they're joining a live stream for the first time, I have no idea who I am. They're like, oh, she's one of those people. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been collecting those for? I don't know. It's maybe been about six, six or seven years since I got my first doll. Wow. I think about six. Yeah. That's amazing. I think back to um, one of the first vlogs I saw of you, I think you were going to a Disney store to collect one of the mm. dolls. I forget which one it was, but I think that's really like my first experience with you. And I think it was like a Bumble Bailey uh, vlog as well. Mm -hmm. um, I also remember you went to like the set when they were filming Once Upon a Time. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's so cool. I love, I was like obsessed with the show at the time. And I just thought it was like really cool. And that's I think that was around the time. I think you had some um, Copic markers stolen or something as well. I don't know if I dreamt that. <laughs> no, I don't think I've ever had any markers stolen. But <laughs> <laughs> One artist I follow had some stolen from their like trunk or something. I must have dreamt that. <laughs> I know. I know Jelly Bee at one point had stuff stolen. Oh, maybe I don't know if it was Copics, then. but yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember watching one vlog. Somebody. I thought it was you. I must have dreamt it. <laughs> Or wait, or am I thinking of someone else now? Now I'm getting confused. I don't know. Yeah, someone someone had like Copics and something got stolen. I can't remember. But do you still have like a giant collection of Copic markers? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't have all of them, but I have like it's over there. Oh, by all oh my, my trash. Gosh. But oh, that's that so bin. Cool. Is that still like the Michaels like crates that you put? Yeah. Together? yeah. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. I went looking for those myself a few months mm -hmm. ago before all this couldn't find any I was so annoyed Aww. I was like that's such a cool idea but I, I know mean... it is a bit deep but I just stick foam blocks in the back so the markers don't go in too deep because with just one crate it's too shallow and yeah. with two it's too deep and I just didn't that's feel really like small. cutting it in half I don't know how to do that so. <laughs> yeah I'm not crafty with wood either <laughs> <laughs> So um, I, first of all, as you know, I'm very excited to talk to you today. Um, I really want to talk to you a bit because you obviously have been like Jazza. You're like one of the OG original, you know, YouTube artists. And I've always admired like everything that you've done. Um, <laughs> yeah, you're just so, you're inspirational to so many people, you know. Um, and something that I found really interesting is lately you've been, you changed your art channel from being like, like the stereotypical art like video to now more of a, a vlog like studio vlog style and I really yeah. love how laid back it is um and obviously you did put a video out talking a bit about this but yeah. what kind of really prompted you to want to you know just do like a different you know theme to your channel yeah I I felt like because for those who don't know I always did the vlogs on a separate channel and then the art on its own channel and merge it together and I think I was sorry for this guy weed whacking outside <laughs> Of course, you had to show up just now, but I think I was just getting tired of the art videos the way I used to do them because I've been posting art videos semi-regularly since January of 2010. So it's been almost 11 years and I think I'm just, it's like, wow, I still like doing art, but I just don't like the way I'm doing it anymore. Like it's, I feel like it's just getting stale to me because I've been doing it the same way for so long. And I've, I've tried to tweak little things here and there with the art channel. Like maybe if I do this differently, it'll re-spark the joy I once felt or something and it just wasn't working for me so I just thought you know what I'm just gonna combine it with my vlogs because I want to make the kind of content that I like to watch and so that was a big push too where I'm like I don't I don't always enjoy this stereotypical speed paint I like when there's a lot of vlog style elements thrown in there and I just I wanted that for my channel too so I just smooshed them together oh I really like that because I, I kind of, I haven't been doing it as long as you, obviously, but I kind of get to a point 
every now and again where I'm like, I feel like I'm just doing the same thing. And I don't really enjoy speed paints either. And I think that obviously YouTube goes through such a, um, like a different cycle very often. Like people used to love challenges and then they didn't. And they like the speed paints where no one talked and it was just relaxing music. And then they didn't. And then it's like painting on crazy things. And then, you know, it just goes through yeah. the cycle. And I don't know, I totally kind of admired that you changed your content a lot. And I can almost see myself doing something similar going forward. Like mm. not just yet, I don't think. I don't know. I feel like it can get really like, you, like you say, it can get stale sometimes. And it's not so much about what other people enjoy, but you have to enjoy it yourself as well. And um, I don't know. I just really enjoy watching vlogs and the vlog style. I think they're just easier to just sit and watch for a long period of time versus something that's more you know, not necessarily scripted, but something that you just sort of sit and then you do week after week, it's important to, um, and for everyone listening to know that it's always good to change it up if you can a bit, because, you know, I kind of have lost my love for creating um, quite a bit lately. And it's just, I feel like, did you get that spark back yourself? Um, yeah. 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 Because before I felt like I was, when I was going to create art, it was, okay, what's this video going to be? Like, what's some art I can create that fits into some sort of video gimmick or idea mm -hmm. or something? And I just, I guess, got sick of that. It's not hating on people who do that kind no. of content. It was more just like me. I wasn't enjoying creating it as much. Mm -hmm. But now it's like I draw something because I want to, not because I have to for a video or like, you know, that deadline's coming at the end of the week, got to create something, that sort of thing. It's like, mm -hmm. it's just me creating. There's no extra gimmick to it or anything and I can just draw when I truly want to I think that's amazing there's no like crazy pressure there I always feel like I'm always trying to find ways where I don't have to make like art in a video because having to make like a decent piece of art every single week is mm. it's virtually impossible to do that so you kind of do have to in a sense work to a very strict time limit and you know people criticize like hmm that piece isn't as good as that one it's like you know <laughs> most people spend weeks and months on their artwork and they're like comparing you to people that make these giant masterpieces in months you know yeah um it, it, it gets quite degrading <laughs> and even even it it's a lot of it's not even the audience putting the pressure on too it's myself yeah, it's like i don't know it's everything's like, got to be better than the last mm -hmm. mm. yeah it's, it's hard especially when you spend so many hours on a video and you finish it and it's like I don't like this <laughs> I know <laughs> and I've got to post it because I have nothing else but I don't like it and you're just like oh, oh people are going to be thinking this they're going to be thinking that they're not going to like this <laughs> yeah oh. I really I don't know I'm just I'm, I'm inspired that you have changed your content up like that and I think it's done really really well and have you found that people have been receptive to it as well yeah so I mean I expected just to to hemorrhage subscribers immediately. Mm -hmm. And initially the sub count actually went up, but I think that was a lot of people migrating from the vlog channel. Mm -hmm. And now it's at a point where it's it's going, it's in a downward trend, but nothing crazy bad. And there've been a few people spoken up just respectfully saying like, oh, I love your content, but vlogs are not my thing. So I'm not gonna watch anymore. And I'm like, that's totally fine. That's yeah. fair. I knew people would not, not everyone would be into it, but I've also gotten a lot of really positive feedback. Um, just so many people being like, this is so much better. Or, you know, the people who always loved only the vlogs and didn't like the art videos, they love the switch because they also mm -hmm. get to see a bit more of the art. And um, where was I going with this? <laughs> I had a second <laughs> thought there, but um, oh yeah, but just people who maybe never really liked vlogs, they like it done this way mm -hmm. because it's, it's still art stuff, but in a vlog. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's really cool. Um, I think as well, you have such a loyal like follower base that people just really just gravitate towards you as a person anyway. And I think, you know, I found myself, I've always watched your videos, but I think I found myself religiously watching them even more now that you've been putting up the vlogs. Oh, interesting. Because, yeah, because I don't know, it's just nice to see the life of somebody and what they're doing in their day-to-day -day life, you know, because it kind of takes you out of your own life a little bit, um, especially now because we're all just stuck doing our, our same routines every single day. So it's nice to see somebody else's routine. Um, mm, yeah. <clears throat> and something I think is really, really cool about you too is when I think of a YouTube artist that like sells a lot of, of products that they make, I always think of you and you always just handle it so well. You always flawlessly, you had your blog channel, you had your main channel, you were selling all your making and selling all of this <laughs> merchandise pins and all this stuff and then packing it yourself. 
And that's a lot of work. Like, I don't know if people realize how much work must have gone into that for you. Yeah, it, I mean, it really is. But at the same time, I love I love all the store stuff. Mm-hmm. I never know if I'm supposed to look at the camera or like down at your face. So <laughs> sorry if I'm like here. No, when you talk, fine. I'm down here. When I talk, I'm up here. But uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so this initially, like years ago, I had a little store where I was packaging things myself, but it was not streamlined at all. And I'm like, this is too much work. And it was way, way fewer orders than I have now. But I was like, no way. I'm never doing this again. I'm just going to use stuff like Redbubble. But then I started diving into it again because I wanted to do enamel pins and other things. And it just, it keeps kind of growing bigger and bigger where it's getting to be more and more work. So I'm trying to like rein things in a little bit, but um, I don't know. That's, that was also kind of one of the reasons why, you know, with the art videos, I'm like, well, I'm not feeling it as much anymore. So I thought, do I just post less or do I bring the vlogs over? And that the store was one of the things that made me want to bring the vlogs over to the main channel because I am doing all this stuff and I think it's interesting for other artists to see, especially if they want to create their own store, mm-hmm. seeing all the behind the scenes of that. So um, yeah, I don't know. It, it just kind of worked out perfectly to merge it all because I had so many different things going on. Yeah. Do you find like your store sales are even better now because people are seeing even more of the behind the scenes of the stuff you do and the process. So you have more chance to kind of like promote like, oh, this is what this is going to look like. Well, this is what yeah. this is going to be when this is coming out. I mean, it's, it's most of the traffic has always come from the vlogs. Cause I can see where the traffic comes when I right. launch my store, but I've only had one update since merging the channels. And that one was more popular than in the past. So I'm thinking maybe that was because of the channel merge. Mm-hmm. It's hard to say, but I, I think so. Oh, I think there's more eyes on it now. That's awesome. What's your favorite like product to sell? Like of all like enamel pins, prints, everything you make. I think the enamel pins, because I don't know, they're just fun and they're pretty and yeah. yeah. Is that like a bestseller of yours as well, whenever you make pins? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I don't have the hugest variety to begin with. Usually it's just like prints and pins. And now I'm expanding into more things. Like the last update, I had stickers for the first time, sticker sheets. And then now I'm working on an advent calendar, which is a whole other beast. Oh. It was, <laughs> it's so much work. I don't know why I'm doing this. I can't imagine <laughs> But I'm doing, oh yeah, I also had washi tape last time for the first time. And then Mm. now I'm doing acrylic charms for the first time and wooden pins now. So it's kind of expanding more now, but before enamel pins are definitely the best seller, but that's just because it's one of the few things I even had. (laughs) I love that. I made like a set of pins two years ago and it was so much work. I have so much admiration for people that can... (laughs) bring out new pin designs you know throughout the year it's just it's it's so difficult because you like you're limited to these colors it has to have this outline you have to you know this yeah. goes into it um I don't know which is your favorite pin that you've ever made <sighs> okay let me look at my board here I mean I might have to say okay it's kind of tied for two so I have a little Christmas tree one called cutie pine I just think it's such a cute design Aww. has a little face on it and then I have one called Bunkin because I have a bunch of little bunnies, a bunch of bunny enamel pins and bunny merch. So it's a little bun bun character and he's in a pumpkin outfit. So <gasps> that's, I think I know which bunkin. one you're talking about. <laughs> so cute. Yeah. I love that. Do you have any like pin designs that you're planning or you've already made or? I mean, I, ha- I haven't planned any new ones other than for the advent calendar I'm working on because my mind's just been there the whole time but I have like I have ones I have not revealed yet because they're staying a secret so there's that oh that's so cool Mm. so there's this whole thing on YouTube where um I feel more like a YouTuber that does art versus an artist that does YouTube do you feel like an artist that does YouTube or especially obviously now you've done the channel merge Mm has that like made a shift in your mind as to like you know I'm an artist now because you obviously sell so much of your art Um, Or has that always been a thing? You always thought of yourself as an artist first. No, I saw myself as a YouTube first, YouTuber Mm -hmm. first before. And so now I don't know, because I think maybe now I consider myself more of an artist first, but like so much of what I do is still intertwined with YouTube and just Mm -hmm. social media in general, like the Twitch streams and stuff like that. I feel like it's still very much a social media based business. So yeah, definitely. I wouldn't say you, like YouTuber from the entertainment perspective first in the sense of how it was before with the art videos. It's mm-hmm. 
it's a tough one but yeah maybe a little more of an artist first now yeah I like that a lot <laughs> I feel like I never have time to make artwork that I want to make anymore because I feel like whenever I make something off camera I feel bad about it and I'm like I should have made that on camera <laughs> yeah. I can't make anything unless I'm filming it and it's just mm -hmm. like this constant pressure um so I really you know think that the vlog is is a good idea um as like artists that are listening if they want to get into selling their own stuff their own artwork would you suggest that they start first of all on social media and then get into that or get into that and then start social media second or what do you think about that I think it's safe to start them simultaneously because as you're building your audience even if you don't have many viewers it's still some traffic to your store because like, for example, back in the day with art YouTube, people mostly just focused on getting their money from AdSense. And you can have just a few sales and maybe you have like 10 views on your video, two people buy something that's way more than you ever would have made from AdSense from that video. So if you're looking to support your art business, um, you need the social media to drive the traffic there, but have that store from the get go, because honestly, even if you're just getting a few sales at the beginning, that's going to help so much, I think. Yeah, I agree. And which platform do you think would you recommend for people to start with? For social media or for the store? For like social media. <laughs> okay. I mean, definitely Instagram is a good place. I'm a bit of a hypocrite because I don't post there very often, <laughs> but it's such a good place for art. Mm -hmm. um, I think YouTube is nice for the personal factor. I mean, any kind of video, TikTok is... Um, TikTok's booming. So that's a good place yeah. too for art. Yeah. But what I like about YouTube is just kind of the personal factor. Like, yeah. you know, it's not just about the art. It's about me, people getting to know me. And exactly. it's more of a personal connection compared to say like a text post on Instagram or something. So, yeah. yeah. I remember hearing once, and I think it was, I forget what his name was, but he said that people are more likely to support and buy things from somebody that they know, they feel they know that they can trust mm -hmm versus maybe something that's maybe a little bit cheaper or from someone that they don't know um, yeah. because they have that, that level of trust there. So I think, you know, like you say, that nice personal touch is there. And, you know, obviously not everyone wants to um, to do YouTube. That's not something that mm -hmm. everyone's comfortable with doing. I have that a lot. People are like, I don't feel comfortable showing my face. Um, so, you know, for me, YouTube was the thing that that did well above anything else. I had Instagram for years and I had like, just over 100 followers after like two years on Instagram wow um yeah it just didn't grow and I I mean again I'm a hypocrite because I didn't really post as much as I probably should have um but I see people on Instagram just killing it they're just like posting all the time using the hashtags growing their business and great with the photos and there's me like every like three months I'm, I'm back <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly <I> me <laughs> but it's, it's kind of hard when you have you already have like when you once you find that platform that is the one you like the most and is performing the best. It's kind of hard to give that much yeah. attention to the other ones. Exactly. You've got to kind of choose your priorities a little bit because, you know, it's hard to balance one social media, let alone two, three of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, I saw your little cat came in. <gasps> Midna. Oh, it's so cute. <laughs> How have to leave the door do cracked, otherwise they'll scream. Oh. <laughs> I have two cats. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. I feel like I'm not enough of a Bailey J fan to be like fully like, how many cats have you got? <laughs> <laughs> the two. Oh, she's so cute. So um, Bailey and I, for everyone listening, Bailey and I met for the first time at VidCon. You probably didn't have a clue who I was. I was like, oh my gosh, No, Bailey. I did. I did. I so did. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, I was kind of starstruck for a bit. And I was so excited because we spent like our little group we spent most of the days at VidCon together and I really mm -hmm. just I love that I um, know yeah we, like when was your first VidCon I did oh I don't remember what the year was but um I had gone there with Valerie from Art of La Carte yeah. and we did like the VidCon and Disney thing mm -hmm. so that was maybe three years before mm -hmm. that VidCon last year mm -hmm. when we all met up mm -hmm. so those are the only two I've ever done. I don't go that often. <laughs> oh, would you go next year if it's like everything's like, I mean, I don't, by July, it's probably still going to be iffy, but would you go if everything's kind of more cleared up again? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And something that's always stopped me in the past is I like to also go to the D23 Expo, which is every two years. <gasps> oh, so I try yeah. to stagger it. So it's like one year VidCon, one year D23. Mm -hmm. 
And so the D23 was supposed to be, well, I guess they, they're postponing to 2022, actually. Usually it's on the odd years. So it would have been next year, but they postponed to 2022. So actually, yeah, that leaves VidCon open. Oh, that's <laughs> Assuming so exciting. Everything's settled with COVID. But. Oh my gosh. I've always wanted to go to D23. What like happens there? Because I don't know much about it. I just hear people raving about it. There's like, well, it's kind of like a typical convention where there's the show floor, but they have like a great show floor, tons of stuff to check out. And then they have different panels. They have celebrity meet and greets, things like that. And the thing that I like the most is they do these showcases where they show upcoming Disney films, stuff that's never been released to the public. And they used to have it split up. So there's the live action panel where you can see upcoming live action movies, then the animation Mm -hmm. one. And then last time they merged them together. But to me, that's like the big highlight. Um, They also had a panel that I ended up really loving where they had a bunch of the Disney princesses get interviewed on stage and some of them even sang and it was just like it was wild seeing all that on stage. Wow, that's so cool. I love that. I need to go. So if you're there, I'm gonna have to meet up with you and be like, Bailey, tell me what to do. Oh, there's some long lines for things. So I'm the kind of person who's willing to camp out overnight so I can Mm. get into the store early enough to get a doll I want. Oh, I would totally, if there's something I want, I would totally do that. I've never done it before, but if there's something I want enough, I would absolutely do that. (laughs) Definitely. (laughs) Um, Is there any conventions anywhere that you would love to go to that you've not been to yet? I don't know. I don't think anything else has really grabbed my attention that much. Mm. I mean, I just, I just do VidCon, TwitchCon, D23 Expo. <laughs> Those are kind of my big three. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So yeah, I, you obviously you stream. Um, how, like, is that a big part of your income as well? Because obviously you've got YouTube, you've got the store and you're very smart and not keeping your eggs in one basket. Mm-hmm. Or is Twitch kind of something that you just do because you really enjoy interacting with people? Obviously you do enjoy that, but yeah, yeah. like side part of the career as well. Uh, I think, in terms of money made from Twitch, it's definitely a side part of mm-hmm. the career because it doesn't make nearly as much as YouTube. And then my, my store is my biggest earner right now. So it's like stores That's biggest amazing, than YouTube. Though. And then yeah, Twitch is down there. It's, it's probably still third biggest, mm-hmm. but um, it's not something I could make a full-time income off of. But I think, uh, I think it's, it's just good though for the interaction. Like you said, I, it's like my social activity when I do yeah. that because we work from home and it's nice to have people to talk to and then I, yeah. I still do the creative streams but then also do some video game stuff so that's kind of more unwinding oh and, nice yeah. I need to watch one of your streams I've never watched one before but I know you always say about it and I'm like oh, I should catch up with that because <laughs> I love watching streams and like live stuff it's so entertaining to just see someone yeah. you know right in front of you live um I would love to know if you had the option to release an art product like Jazza released say his his art box or Mm -hmm. other artists release a book or say a piece of of I don't know an art supply if you had could literally your limitless you know options what would you release if you could I mean I wouldn't mind some kind of art supply line of my own it Mm -hmm. just sounds way too scary though and like there's so much that goes in with making sure art supplies are like light fast and all these different things, but I wouldn't mind diving into just like starting small, like, oh, getting my own sketchbook made. I've, I've briefly mentioned this in a live stream recently. It's like not something I've talked about publicly, but just like more useful products is what I want. Cause I'll still do things like the enamel pins, the fun little items, mm-hmm. but I kind of want to dive into stuff that's more useful to people, yeah. uh, whether that is an art product or just something they can use in their everyday life that features my art on it. So mm-hmm. Yeah, that's really cool. I really want to start making like the art that I make in general is it's not overly kind of illustrative. It's more like, you know, hours of an acrylic painting, which is fun, but it's not really overly translatable to merchandise or like pins. Mm -hmm. It's fine for a print, but not really anything else. So I need to be a little bit more simplistic but I find it quite hard to go from that mindset of making something that's like you know an acrylic canvas piece to something that is you know like graphic designers do they make stuff yeah. that's so simple but looks so good but it's, it's not easy in the slightest bit um that's why I love your enamel pins they're just they they're so perfect for pins but you know I can tell that they're, they're not they're not easy to make <laughs> yeah and and it's so different like you said from a painting because mm-hmm. 
like doing that transition was kind of weird. And my art style is kind of all over the place. Sometimes I do stuff that's extra cartoony. Sometimes maybe it's more semi-realistic. So it's all over the place, but definitely for merch, like the pins, it's like simplify it way down. It's mm -hmm. kind of a whole other beast compared to the other art I do, which like you said, is mostly good for things like prints or mm -hmm. maybe on a tote bag or something like that. Yeah. I would really love to make like, I've been looking into it, like pencil cases. Cause I love drawing bears. <laughs> that's the only thing I can kind of draw semi like simple without it looking like absolute trash <laughs> um but like it's really hard to find suppliers that will customize stuff for it to even be worth selling you know because sometimes you have to buy such huge quantities of certain mm -hmm. items that by the time you've sold it you make like you know 200 dollars on all of this all this work and then all of the shipping yourself and stuff when you know stuff like pins usually you know you obviously make a bigger chunk of money from it I know when I sold my pins I was amazed but I was like looking into getting these like little canvas bags and I'm trying to find a supplier for it and I don't know it's like you've got to buy like 500 of them for it to even be even kind of worth <laughs> yeah. the effort of designing it and all that stuff but it's like I'm not gonna sell 500 pencil cases <laughs> I mean, I bet you could, you could sell way more than that, but that's the scary part. Like when I first started, mm -hmm. I did 100 enamel pins, just one design, a hundred of them. Mm -hmm. And I was like, will these even sell? Like it's, it wasn't fan art or anything, right? Like I wanted to only sell my own design, like my own characters and things like that. And so mm -hmm. I was freaking out, but I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to start small like this. And they sold out in 10 minutes. So then it's wow. like, use the money from that to then order more for next time. And so it's mm -hmm. kind of ballooned that That's way amazing was that like something that you hinted at like I'm not very good with the whole promotional aspect I'm like oh I'm gonna be doing this and oh hi I've released it here it is done but some people like really heavily promote stuff for weeks and then they just like sell out um yeah how do you like what's your best advice for promoting stuff like that I mean for me it's just through my vlogs because I don't even have to try to be like like, I don't like being super salesy. And sometimes I almost yeah. wonder if like, oh, am I showing too much pin stuff in the vlogs? Like, I hope it's not coming across salesy. It's just like behind the scenes, like here's what I'm working on. Mm -hmm. But it indirectly is like an ad because people are seeing what you're doing. They're seeing the product, but it just doesn't come it. across as like pitching a product, right? Yeah. That's very smart. You're a very smart business lady. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, most of it is like, I just kind of fell into it and I'm like, oh, this uh -huh. kind of works. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's up in the smart business sense. Did you like ever go to school for art or did you just, you know, just like self-taught or how did you go about that? Uh, I went to school for animation because even in high school, I didn't have any art classes. It conflicted mm -hmm. with all my French immersion classes. So I, I really didn't have any art instruction till that till then and that was like my that was my fourth year of post-secondary education was switching to animation stuff mm -hmm. and so that was mostly 3d animation on the computer but there still were some drawing classes like well there were two 2d animation classes where you're drawing mm -hmm. on paper there's like a drawing for animators class i did three life drawing classes so there was still some drawing in there yeah but a lot of it was computer stuff like 3d modeling texturing mm -hmm. animating that's really cool. So did you like fall into this with YouTube and kind of have your style changed completely? Or, you know, were you like full, like wholeheartedly hoping to go into like animation at Disney or something? Was that like what your initial plan was and it changed or? No, yeah, well, I never, I knew I never would want to move out of the country for animation because at the time I was not thinking of YouTube as being a career. I'm like, I'll be an animator in a studio. Like that'll be my job for the rest of my life. It mm -hmm. just kind of evolved where um, all the stuff I was doing at home was a ton of work and it got to a point where I was making way more money from that than I was at my job. Mm -hmm. And so I weaned myself off my job. Like I cut back to part-time and then ended up leaving altogether. So that's amazing. Yeah, that was, that was an, I did not see myself being here. I kind of lucked out with the timing, I think, and just being consistent over the years, mm -hmm. keeping up with it while having my day job so I could pay my bills and yeah. it just... That's I thought the day awesome. job was the main job and then it just switched. That's, that is so cool. I love to hear stuff like that. <laughs> you worked so hard for so many years. What do you think um, was a really defining moment like with your channel that you realized, wow, this is actually going somewhere? Hmm. Um, I guess, I mean, there was this one point, it was right before I went full time, I think. Oh no, that was just after. 
like I had recently gone full time with the channel, but it kind of had blown up, like some videos had blown up all kind of around the same time. And it was around like October, November, and everything just like really skyrocketed then. And it's gone down since, but that was kind of the whoa moment, like, I don't know, to me, I feel like that was a defining moment, but at the same time, I was already full time by then. So I don't know, because everything was just so gradual until then. And then it was mm -hmm. just like this huge boom. So yeah, that is amazing. Mm -hmm. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Because you've been through um, YouTube for, you know, through a lot of its different cycles of change. And I always, you know, tell people whenever they want to start YouTube, just look at what's working for mm -hmm. channels that you like and stick to that. And I think there's this always constant pressure of obviously trying to keep up Wait, what's, what are people watching now? What can I paint on now? Mm -hmm. um, what do you think of like the current state of the YouTube like art community? Do you feel that it's going in like a bad direction or do you think it's just like something different to, I don't know. How do you feel about like the way that it is right now what people are having to make for views now? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Okay, to be honest, I don't watch a lot of regular art videos mm -hmm. anymore. I will mostly watch the people who do the art vlogs. Yeah, I'm the same. Because that's the more, that's more of what I'm interested in. So I don't know what everyone is painting on now. I know it was like iPhones and water bottles, but I think that was more like a year ago. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure where it's at now. I've heard people complain that there's a lot of drama channels in the art community. I've not seen a single one. So I guess I'm staying out of that in my recommended, which is great. <laughs> there was um, one. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I just mostly watch the, I just kind of watch the vlog content. I don't even know what people are yeah. doing. I'm kind of out of the loop. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of in a state where, and I was speaking to Jazza about this, it's kind of this pressure to, instead of just, oh, I'm going to be painting on a canvas today. It's like, what can I paint on? Or what can I do that's so out there that people will want to click on it? Because mm -hmm. um, there's just with YouTube, obviously, I mean, every job is kind of can be unstable depending on obviously the economy even, but um YouTube's always got this sense of pressure like oh it might not last if I do this it might this might die or if I do this um how have you ever like handled the the kind of pressure that's there to try and like stay relevant or stay where it can remain a job um have you ever like dealt with that worry or do you just kind of take take each you know month as it comes no I definitely did because I I definitely used to stress about like how do I make this video interesting? Like I said before, what's the mm -hmm. gimmick to get it to go well? And initially I loved all that. Like when the YouTube challenges first started getting popular, I loved it because it was new, you know, over uh -huh. time I kind of got sick of it, but um, now I'm forgetting where the question was. Sorry, can you repeat it? <laughs> um, wait, I forgot the question too. <laughs> it was, oh, like how I've dealt with- um, Oh yeah, the pressure of worrying about if yeah. the you know, end kind of thing. Yeah, so I used to stress about that a lot more. And mm -hmm. it's thanks to my shop that now I've kind of settled down. Like obviously right. I still need that audience to drive the traffic there. But for me, it's more like, I'm not as concerned about the YouTube performance anymore. Cause obviously merging the channels and doing the vlogs where I once did just pure art videos, mm -hmm. like the views are gonna obviously be down. And I mean, I'm posting more frequently so it kind of evens out to yeah. overall mm -hmm. being about the same, but to me I just didn't care as much anymore like it's like the switch was just flicked I do obviously care to a certain extent I think anyone who says they don't care at all about the views yeah. is lying <laughs> they're lying yeah <laughs> and I still like to check up on the videos and yeah you know if one does well you're like ooh. but at the same time it's so freeing when my ability to pay my bills is not tied to my views yeah. like it's nice because maybe in one month you make a little bit extra if some videos do well but that worry is not there so much and part of right. me does wonder will I fade to irrelevance a few years from now but I really don't think you will I'm trying to not stress too much about it you know yeah. like I'm just trying to live more in the now because the more I think about the far future the more I get stressed about it like <laughs> <laughs> I think that's amazing it's very like freeing to listen to you because you definitely seem happier in your vlogs and it must mm -hmm. just be, like you say, a weight lifted off because you don't have yeah. to worry about your money being tied to your videos. Um, for me, my biggest like source of income is sponsorships followed by like AdSense. But obviously if my views go down, so does my AdSense and the sponsorships. So um, I've also, I do a Skillshare class as well, or I've done three and that's kind of a part of my income as well. Um, but that's why I really would like to kind of dive more into 
making more products to sell because I, I do not so much now at this moment in time, but there was a period of time I went through where I was constantly paranoid. Like my video is like a thousand views down from the last one. Oh no. And my channel's dying, you know, this whole paranoia that, oh no, what do I do? Um, because when I was in school for something totally irrelevant, it was like all tech based. I hated it so much. And my biggest fear is ever having to go into that. Um, if like this doesn't go anywhere. So it's always about trying to, you know, not put your eggs in one basket. And I think you do that so flawlessly, you know, you do such mm -hmm. a good job at it. Um, so what do you think that you would like to continue doing like for over the next 10 years, you know, what yeah. do you, would your ideal kind of goals be? I mean, it's hard to say because my interests are always kind of changing and that's good though. drifting, but like, I'm just so happy with where it is right now. I kind of want to just keep this up, but just, you know, experiment with maybe new ideas for the store. But I, I feel like I have a really good thing going on where I'm just like, I'm creating art. I'm sharing the process of it. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's really it. Like, <laughs> I feel like I'm in a good place because I'm not interested in doing commission work. I'm not interested yeah. in like being hired by some big company. I kind of like just being just me. I don't want to grow into a big business where I have a ton of employees or something no. like, like, I don't want my store to become a big, a big company. I just want to be like me, yeah. my store kind of keeping to myself, yeah. I guess. <laughs> I think that's why people love what you do because they can see you hand packaging it and putting it together. And it's like, Bailey actually said this to me. This is exciting. <laughs> she made it and she's packaging it. So she's touched it, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's wild. Cause I could have something like a print, like make some art and be like, oh, the print's on Redbubble. And like, maybe a few people will get it. But then it's like, okay, the print is in my shop. And it's like, you can sell hundreds all of a mm -hmm. sudden. It's, it's wild. That is amazing. I love that. I could definitely use some advice from you. I absolutely <laughs> could. No, I think that's really cool. Do you, have you ever like sold a, a product that, um, like I said about, I'm thinking about like a pencil case or whatever. Has there ever been like a random item that you have um, had customized or put your art onto that was just not worth it in the end to be making? I mean, I don't know because a lot of the random items are just things that are say on Redbubble, but they just make it as people yeah. order it. And so there's some weird things on there. Like they have these leggings and like, no one's going to buy that art on <laughs> leggings. Cause it's not a pattern. Like it's not going to make yeah. sense. Um, so there's stuff like that, but mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't feel like there's anything in my actual shop mm -hmm. that would fit that description, but I've also just been expanding to new products recently. So do you have like a set schedule every week where you kind of prepare or manage or like just just deal with the store orders? Because I'm someone that kind of does things <laughs> all over the place. I'm like, oh, maybe tomorrow I'll film and then maybe do a bit of editing, then I'll carry it on into the next day. And then maybe I'll plan this out. Oh, but I've not been able to. So I'll do that next week instead. And then, you know, packaging orders is just like, I don't tend to have like a constant store. I just like every now and again, I'll be like, oh, here's some stuff there, put it there. And then it's like, oh crap, there's so much to do. <laughs> Yeah, I'm definitely not organized either. I Because I like to switch up. I like to just do what I'm in the mood for that day, but yeah. also have to keep in mind of, you know, sometimes you just got to do the stuff you don't want to do. But mm -hmm. I try to think of it more like weekly goals. So I'll sit down with my at my planner and be like, okay, what's the stuff I want to get done this week? And I end up not, if I try to write it all out day by day, I end up not really sticking to that. And I yeah. just move things around all the time. It's kind of weird. I just know, like, I just kind of have like a, for example, with this, my upcoming store update, I know it's going to be sometime in November. So I got to make sure everything's ready. So I'm trying to prepare all my pins by the end of this month. Mm -hmm. So that's the goal. And however I get to that point, it's going to vary. Yeah. Have you ever done like, some people go really like hardcore into just like the packaging for it. Like they have like the tissue, the custom tissue paper mm -hmm. and the custom boxes and stuff. Um, I've never gone that far, but I'd imagine that's quite fun. Is that something that you do or you have done? I don't have a ton of custom packaging yet because uh, I just get boxes that are just a default size you can already buy, yeah. but it's not the ideal size I would like. So I, I'm looking into maybe getting some custom ones made, but uh, even just looking into custom ones for the advent calendar, it was like getting pretty expensive. Yeah, did you have that was also a big there? box, so I'm yeah. not sure. But I don't have any kind of custom tissue yet, although I kind of want sleeves 
for my prints to be custom because I use glassine, which is just like paper that's been buffed. So it's kind of smooth. It doesn't have wax on it, but it's just something that's biodegradable. Right. And so I'm thinking of maybe getting printed glassine sleeves because right now they're just plain. That's cool. But I do have like little backing cards for my pins, for example, Mm -hmm. I custom make those. So there's that part that's custom Mm -hmm. and like little thank you card, that sort of thing. But I'm kind of bumping it up now. I'm like, hmm, how can I make this even better in a way? That is really cool. I like that you're like being eco-friendly with that. I bought a bunch of um, like, what do you call them? Like brown packages that are kind of soft from uh, eco enclosed because it's apparently it's biodegradable or something and I got a bunch of like cups that are biodegradable for like videos and stuff um packaging it can be very expensive you know especially if you are unfortunately having to buy stuff more expensive because obviously it's more biodegradable it's better for the planet it's obviously very important but um it then increases obviously your overhead as well um did you ever have to get to a point where the packaging was costing you so much you had to like put up the price of the items or did you just kind of take the hit no i i mean i've never made any massive changes that have really increased the packaging cost Mm -hmm. luckily like the little glassine sleeves i use are actually very affordable so that works out yeah um so there hasn't been a whole lot there like i think those might even have been a bit cheaper than the this plastic sleeves I used to use because when I first started out with my store I'm like oh I'm not selling that much stuff like Mm -hmm. I wasn't really as eco-conscious I'm like oh it's not that much it doesn't matter but then Mm -hmm. as my store grew I was like okay I need to like (laughs) (laughs) switch this up so um but I guess the only yeah nothing yeah so there hasn't been that big of a shift because I I made that switch pretty early on so I haven't noticed a huge difference and my margins were good enough like nothing was really affected Hmm. good for you so uh, any artists out there who want to start selling their merchandise, what would be your best advice for it? Because obviously stuff like pins, they they can get pricey. When I first sold, I think I had five or six pins. It cost around, I think it was like $850 for like 500 pins. And obviously some people, if they're just starting out, can't you know afford that outright. Mm-hmm. Um, I did like um, a Kickstarter for it because I was like, that's so much money. I don't know if people are going to buy all of them. Um, what would your best advice be to somebody that wants to start, you know, start small maybe, or, you know, different, different yeah. products? I definitely think the Kickstarter route is a good one. I don't have experience with that, but I see so many people doing that with pins. So that's definitely a way to start or just do it small. Like I did where I just had a hundred initially, and then use the profit from that to buy more. So that, that's another way you can do it as well. Cause it's, it's a lot, especially when you're buying lower quantities of pins, they cost more. Another tip is to just buy them directly from a manufacturer, because if you use a middleman, they're going to cost you usually close to twice as much. Yeah. And so if you can go direct to a manufacturer, that also saves you a lot of money. Because my first run, I did do the middleman route. And then the next time after that, I was like, okay, I'm doing it differently this time so <laughs> it could save a lot of money. That's so cool. Mm. Do you have any like horror stories to tell about, you know, anything like obviously you buy big bulk loads of like product gets sent to you I know you had like a package go missing once is that like the worst thing that's happened so far with like your store uh I would say yeah that one because that was my huge print order um uh, from cat print and I had spent like four thousand dollars or something on this oh or like gosh. over three thousand us dollars something like that on these prints and the package went missing and so I was freaking out and thankfully they replaced it which was great oh, that was probably the biggest nightmare um, right yes. now I'm getting these custom boxes made for my advent calendar. Cause I want it to be a classic one where there's a perforated doors and you open oh, each door. Yeah. And so I need something custom made for that. And I'm getting a little worried cause that's the last thing I'm waiting on. And I'm like, okay, oh. hey, it's still not here. And I want this out. Like I want people to receive it hopefully in December. Yeah. And so there's that. And they keep sending me pictures of a, a sample that's not correct. And I keep saying like, no, it's not, the box is not tall and skinny (laughs) it's wide and short so they I don't know they're trying to assure me like yeah we know what you mean we know what you mean but every picture I get is wrong and I'm just I'm kind of worried so stressful (laughs) there's no end to that story yet because I don't have them yet but oh well I'll cross my fingers for you that it all goes well (laughs) (laughs) do you have to order a lot of stuff from like because obviously you're based in Canada Mm -hmm. Um, do you find that a lot of the stuff you have to order is based in the US or like out of country or are you kind of lucky in that Canada has most of that stuff you know there Uh, most of it is out of 
country that I get like right. the prints come from the U.S. and like the pins come from China so mm-hmm. things are kind of just all over the place really yeah. shipping must get very expensive for that stuff then. <laughs> I know it does and like the oh, prints used sure. to have such cheap shipping and then they like it would be like twenty dollars to ship yeah. my prints, which honestly they were undercharging. I would be willing yeah. to pay more than that, but then it skyrocketed to hundreds of dollars every time I make a print order. And yeah. even with the pins getting stuff shipped overseas, it ships very fast. Usually arrives in like two to four days, mm-hmm. but you're looking at adding on an extra few hundred just for the shipping. So. Wow, that's stressful. And then you must have you have to plan as well, just in case it takes longer than you expect. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's why I don't commit to dates until yeah. I have everything on hand. <laughs> that's smart because I've made that mistake before and I'm like, well, that's delayed. So now I have to explain why it's not here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but I have asked on Instagram um, if anyone had some questions for you. Oh. So let me go through and see. I posted way too many stories today. <laughs> <laughs> I either post none or like a bunch at the same time. <laughs> okay. So someone here, let me have a look. Um, let's see one that you've most likely not already had to answer already from me <laughs> um, what's your favorite medium I just I think markers they've kind of been my tried and true over the years I just I keep going back to them and I'd say second favorite is oil painting but just like markers on paper I love it yeah do you think that um like some people make custom like packaged like Copic markers I feel like that'd be so cool if you had like a custom Bailey pack of Copics that'd be so cool I actually kind of did way in the past this is super early YouTube I still had my old channel Z Kitty Z Mm -hmm. and I I had my art on Copic packaging there were four different sets of Copic chow markers like little packs of six or eight or something Mm -hmm. and my art was on the different packs and looking back it's so cringe the art is awful (laughs) and that was kind of through like through a company that sold markers Mm -hmm. so I think you could only get them from that particular website but it was just like my mind was blown back then I was like whoa oh that's so cool but I didn't make any kind of like money off of that it was just like that is really cool. I've never, I've never <laughs> done anything like that. Like I work on something that's sold. Oh my gosh, that must be so cool. Yeah. Um, let me see. Um, who was your first friend over the internet through YouTube? Oh God. Hmm. That's hard. Cause I feel like I'm not like extremely close with anyone where we're like chatting all the time, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. Because I never really talked with anyone for the longest time. <laughs> and then like when me and Valerie went to VidCon together, that was kind of like the first friend moment, I feel like. Aww. So maybe I'll say that one. Um, I know I also would like was involved a lot with uh, Saku M's and Art by Kearney Haley. Like they were the people I'd collab with. Right. And, you know, we're all, always watching each other's videos. So that kind of brings me back. Oh, that's so cool. I'll ask you one more question. And let's see. Um, What tips do you have for facing the pressures of an outsider's opinion? Oh, that is tough because... People are cruel. People can be cruel. (laughs) (laughs) I think it helps to to look at it and recognize the difference between something that is a hate comment versus mm-hmm. just a normal criticism yeah. or advice, that sort of thing. And it, it's definitely hard. It gets easier with time. Yeah, there's always, I agree. there's still certain comment types that will irritate me, but I've gotten way better with it over time. You kind of mm-hmm. just have to, I mean, <laughs> you just learn to deal with it, uh-huh. I guess, over time. Mm-hmm. It's easier said than done though. It takes a while to get used to it. I agree. And it's something that sucks because you shouldn't have to get used to people being nasty to you. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. like, I'm used to it. It's actually funny because I was watching your Jazz a Box unboxing video the other day. And I don't know how, I think I had my Jazz unboxing video on one tab and yours on the other. And I saw this this comment about something about the box and I got all defensive and I was like, rrr, rrr, rrr. and I realized like a couple hours later, the person replied to me. They're like, what? You, 
what why are you I wasn't even talking to you and I looked I was like your video <laughs> Oh, oh, that's embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh my God, I'm so embarrassed. I'm like, hmm, but you'll comment in, so you must have a guilty conscience. I'm like, no, I'm just stupid, I guess. <laughs> Were they talking about me or like about the box? No, it wasn't about you. It was about, um, they were criticizing because Jazza had sent the box to YouTube artists mm. and like, it's not fair that he, and I was just saying, well, it's, you know, it's, it's promotion. He's sending it mm-hmm. because we can help promote the product. That's kind of how it works, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And I was like, get defensive. Like, Jazz is a great person. They're like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Jazz is a great person because they were like, um, you know, Jazz has gone down in my estimations. And I'm like, you know, again, like, <laughs> defensive. It, it, I was yeah. like, Jazz is a great person. How dare you? <laughs> I think it's much easier. Like, it's much more tempting to want to defend when you're defending mm-hmm. someone else too. Like, yeah. if it's me, I'm like, yeah, whatever. But if it's someone you like, it's like, no, <laughs> it is. Like I do not stick up for myself very easily, like in real life. But we were, um, my mum and I were on vacation, or my family was um, at Disney a few years ago, and a woman that worked at Epcot was really rude to my mum. And I was in the bathroom at the time, so when I came out, my mum like came out and said, "Oh, this woman was really rude to me." I went right, and I like stormed in there and I yelled at her. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> So yeah, I'm, I'm very much like, I will stand up for people that I care about, but like, or, you know, that I admire, but not myself. <laughs> as I much as that. I should. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, thank you so much for joining me, Bailey. This has been wonderful yeah. to talk to you. Thank you for having me. I love yeah. these art chats. So oh, good. me too. It was so much fun. And everyone listening, go check out Bailey. Bailey, what are your social media so people can follow you? Okay, my YouTube is Bailey J. I guess you'll have the spelling. Don't spell it wrong. You might find someone else. <laughs> And then other social media is usually Bailey underscore J or just Bailey J. Oh, so Bailey you'll is find the sweetest. it if you search those. <laughs> <laughs> Bailey is the absolute sweetest. And I remember being at VidCon with you. So many people came up to you. It was like amazing. And you're just so lovely to each and every person. You're just a sweetheart. Well, I was fangirling over everyone I was seeing in there. Fangirling over, we're like all fangirling over each other. We're all like, oh, oh, oh there's you. Like, oh, there's you. I'm like, I'm like a foot from Bailey J. <laughs> oh well thank you everyone for listening go check out bailey take care and we'll see you in the next episode bye bye